meeting of the British Association of Social Workers. Uh, my name is John Dudley. I've been BASRA's treasurer since 2016, and I've chaired the organization's Heritage Project Steering Group. Using the context and learning from the Heritage Project, which marked BASWA's 50th anniversary year in 2020, we're here to focus on the next 50 years, influencing the future of social work, increasing public understanding and engagement in social work. And I'm delighted to be joined by a panel with a wide ranging knowledge and experience of the social work field. And uh, on the panel, we welcome firstly Ali Fryer, and do give us a little wave as I introduce you, uh, so that people can see who you are, who is an expert by experience, uh, who is actively engaged with charities and organisations in the field, including Baswa, and to use her voice to promote a better understanding in particular of mental health and other fluctuating needs. Secondly, Gabby Zavoli, uh, who has so ably coordinated the Baswa Heritage Projects over the last 18 months, uh, despite the challenges presented by the COVID pandemic. Uh, next, Mithran Samuel, who has been the editor of Community Care for nearly three years, and as well as managing news and commercial content at the heart of social care, he also manages the annual Community Care Live event, which uh, is back in full effect in London uh, next month. Uh, next is Russell Hogarth. Uh, who is another stalwart of the Heritage Project and a great friend of Baswa. He's an honorary fellow, a community ambassador and social entrepreneur in residence at the University of Central Lancashire, and his expertise as an independent advisor for community engagement in higher education and his direct experience of health and social care is recognised nationally and internationally. Uh, Sandra Simpson, uh, is uh, Hi Sandra, is a social worker with uh, Coventry City Council and a member of Baswa's Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Advisory Group. And we'll also be hearing from Ella Candy, a social worker from Leicester, who has also founded her own charity to help children orphaned by the ongoing AIDS pandemic. And Nadia Kankova, a social work student at the University of Derby, uh, who's act been actively involved in, also in Baswa's Heritage Project. And of course, we welcome Ruth Allen, who is Baswa's chief executive. Uh, but first, before we get into the discussion, we will share a short film, which gives a flavor of our heritage year to prompt discussion and debate about what lies ahead for social work. And if any of you watching have questions or comments arising from the film or from the discussion that follows, uh, do post them in the comments box to the right of your screen and we will get to them if we can. Uh, so uh, in the meantime, we'll move straight over to the film. Hello and welcome to Baswa Recorded Voices. Koiso Falcha Falcha, welcome to the festival celebrating the 50 years of the British Association of Social Workers. Welcome everybody to Baswa's 50th birthday celebrations. Happy birthday. Thanks for being there and just keep modernising and moving on. It's your 50th birthday and 100 years of doing phenomenal social work. Happy birthday, Baswa. Have an absolutely lovely time. I have a huge admiration uh, for all of you. Llan gyfachiadau i cymdeithas gweithgwydd cymdeithasol prydain ar ei channer can mlwyddiant. Courage and encouragement both come from the word core, meaning heart and I think social work takes a lot of heart. It's a heart activity first, and the head, hands and feet follow. I'm John Dudley. I chair our Heritage Steering Group. These are extraordinary times. Many of us have faced tests and challenges we couldn't have anticipated even a few months ago. 
COVID-19 has had a huge impact on our practice and the way our practice is changing at the moment, I think it's making us revisit our why. We can't go out and visit somebody, so we need to look at why were we going to do that and then try and fulfil that in a different way. I would firstly want to acknowledge the pivotal role that social workers have played thus far and indeed the heroism and dedication of all social work and social care staff. I know that your commitment to improving the lives of people in Wales will continue long after the pandemic is over. I've been hugely impressed and grateful for the way in which social workers have stepped in to meet the current challenge. I want social workers to be the highest paid civil servants because they're looking after society's greatest asset, the child and their families. I want social workers to be skipping to work, asking for a greater caseload because everyone out there in the public appreciates the work that they're doing in saving the generation that needs to be saved. Why did we not get as much praise in, in the Thursday night clapping? We cannot and do not blow our own trumpets because we're doing it in somebody else's misery. Cutbacks causing bigger issues, psychological warfare. They say widespread austerity is a life choice. Welfare emphasis gone from our probation services. Why are those women talking about that's called the the spirit of our ancestors? In Malaysia, they have this um, festival called the Night of the Hungry Ghost, and there's lots of marquees in the streets, and there's kind of no expectation for anybody, to, any person, to go in because they're for the ghosts, for the ancestors. And I found these really fascinating. So I've done this series of paintings based on that. However, you know, non-judgmental you are about things, at the end of the day, you are asked for your opinion on what should happen in people's lives and making interventions there. So there's always that um, heavy weight that you carry. And I think that's something that isn't widely acknowledged enough in society. 50 years strong, the world is your family. I qualified in November 2018, graduated in January 2019, then the lockdown came and I realised the how much we needed each other. I remember writing a poem about togetherness because together we can and it was proved that work, our hospital colleagues, uh, care agencies, everybody came together just to make sure that the people that we served were at the centre of what we're doing. I would like more progress to be made towards the elimination of discrimination, bias and prejudice for both workers and the people that we work with in the sector. This will be made possible only when every person looks within themselves. I was born in Palestine before it became Israel. I've lived in Paris, I've lived in Vienna, I've lived in London, I've lived in Australia. And somebody said to me the other day, oh, you're Scottish. And I said, no, I'm not Scottish. I'm a citizen of the world, please. Older people play an important role in our society. They are the makers and the carriers of our history, our adored family members, and above all, human beings. Older people have faced many human rights issues during this pandemic. I guess the question we need to be asking ourselves as a society, as social workers, is how did it come to this? Last year, I'd hoped to meet you, Margaret, when you received the Andrew Moravia of Apostle Medal from the International Federation of Social Workers. And you were nominated by Basua because of your work to uncover the 
harm, the evil done to child migrants and to fight for their rights. And also 10 years since the story of what you uncovered, which you told in your book, Empty Cradles, was made into a film by our second guest, Jim Loach. The child migrant community as a whole recognised bits of themselves in all of it. As Jim said, you know, it touched him, it touches all of us, it changes all of us. The British Association of Social Workers were fantastic when, we, when this film was first released. Um, and are, are tonight, I mean, in, incredibly supportive. So thank you to, to you. So I think we need a much stronger value base, we need a stronger ethical base, and we need to be more cognizant of human rights. Anyone looking to see how the British Journal has um, told this story about social work, I think won't be disappointed in the articles we've chosen. In the Northern Ireland context, it's very interesting how um, social work research was shaped by the nature of the state. The journal rightly has to make sense of the, the variety of policy making agendas in, across not just the United Kingdom, but internationally. Some of the social problems, some of the issues that social workers deal with uh, have no borders. I think what I've had in my 50 years associated with social work is uh, a recognition of how important the past has been, how it's shaped our present, and I think will also shape our future. I really hope that social work won't became more about paperwork than it's about contact with people. You do need a professional association. You need something to, um, to be a lightning rod for what a social work should become. Baswa and social work uh, continue to be relevant, important, and also necessary. I think that idea of a kind of unified uh, voice uh, for social workers uh, being lifted into public consciousness to make change uh, is a really good one and it's one that I would certainly get behind. There are people who want to tell your stories for you. Do not let them. Use your voice. Surf this wave of hope. For stories help us all to bind and words they help us all to find this thing that we call humankind. Great. Well, I was quite struck by that film. It's the first time I've seen it run through in full. And for me, there were a couple of, of golden threads running through it that have also run through my social work practice over the, the last 40 years or so. Uh, one very much about equality, diversity and inclusion, uh, which is, has been hugely important throughout that time and has never been perhaps more significant than it is now. And the second about the importance of, of the contribution of people with lived experience to our profession and to our policy making uh, and everything from clients our fellow citizens which was published by Basra in 1980 right up to the present day it's it's still there as a huge issue as a golden thread that uh, runs through it um, but I'm going to ask Ruth now uh, if she can to uh, just say a little bit about where Basra might go from here where we can go on to write our next chapter thanks John uh, the Heritage Project has allowed us to really explore all the decades since 1970, even looking back further and where we came from as a profession um, when we were formed really as a unified profession in 1970, but are the precursors to that and to the creation of, of Baswa. And we've been able to learn an awful lot um, of things, things I certainly didn't know, lots of us, lots of us haven't known. And we've been able to really capture the multiple histories, the multiple heritages that have made up 
uh, Basra and made up social work over those years. There's no one story in a way of Basra and no one story of social work in that time. And that's been the richness of it. And we've been able to, I think, unearth uh, some stories that we'd not heard before and so learn from history in new ways, uh, narratives about, about who we are that we haven't heard before. Um, and so now we're moving on to a different phase and a new project, a new movement enterprise, a new, th a new thing to really get, our, get stuck into. And that's really about the legacy. Um, and I've got a couple of quotes here from, um, there's a project in Canada that works in community development around using notions of legacy and the kind of continuity from between generations to generations and how you get renewal and new things happening but built on strong foundations. And I've got a couple of quotes from them here. And the first is saying that legacy is about life and living. So it's not about death, it's about life and living. It's about learning from the past, living in the present and building for the future, which of course was our main theme of our, of our heritage project. Next slide, please. So, um, oh, sorry, it's come out ever so small on my screen, um, but this is really nice uh, metaphor about a forest that they use, where they talk about, um, it's actually, it's an ecological truth, asking where do you think it's best to plant a young tree, a clearing in an, or in an old growth forest or in an open field. And ecologists tell us that a young tree grows better when it's planted in an area with older trees. The reason seems that the roots of the young trees are able to follow the pathways created by former trees and implant themselves more deeply. And over time, the roots of many trees may actually graft themselves to one another, creating an intricate interdependent foundation hidden under the ground. And in this way, stronger trees share resources with weaker ones and the whole forest becomes healthier. And this is a kind of another definition really of legacy and interconnection across time with the need for those who've come before us and a responsibility uh, to those who come after us. And out of this comes brand new growth and new forms of, of, of species kind of emerge out of this, but built on these strong foundations. So next slide, please. Oh, there we go. Um, so I just want to go through some of the key legacy themes that we've taken um, from this. The first, uh, from the whole project really, the first is that we will continue that to mainstream the capture of our heritage and our history through ongoing events, through the digital work that we've done, we've collected, we've been able to collect oral histories digitally, even though we haven't been able to meet in person, creating real life collections of artifacts, and building on the richness um, that the Heritage Project has, has brought to the cultural and artistic life of the association, which I think has also been really, um, really important and actually very important to be able to bring that in the COVID, in the COVID time as well, to bring people together. But we'll continue to celebrate and learn from social work lives, so the lives of social workers. And sadly, we lost some people during, during this year. Um, and but to celebrate what individuals have brought is, is so important and to understand those social work lives. We'll create learning resources for schools, universities and civil society to increase understanding of social work and promote social work as a career for the next generation. We want to build on new forms of volunteering, which have been part of the project, which and offering training and support for members who want to get involved as volunteers uh, to develop those initiatives. We will continue our theme of learning about ourselves through the eyes of others, particularly uh, through the, the eyes of people with lived experience and living experience of social work. And then finally, which I think is something we will be talking about in this session now, how do we create a movement to change public perceptions and understanding and engagement in social work? We want to take a lead on this, but act with partners across social work, across education, across the media working with the Social Workers Union, and to do this creatively and within innovation, to create a new dialogue between the profession and communities, and reflecting, of course, the diversity of places across the four nations and the different kinds of relationships that we will build with different communities um, in different parts of the UK. So that's those are some key themes that we've taken, we want to take forward, and I'm fascinated to hear what the panel and, and our audience might make of that. Thanks very much, Ruth. 
So uh, in a moment, I'll ask the, uh, the panellists to uh, respond to what they've uh, seen and heard, and in particular about how we can make that shift to uh, public perception of social work. Uh, but just before we do that, let's just hear a little more from uh, Nadia Kankova and Ella Candy uh, that they have re-recorded for us. According to the Code of Ethics of the British Association of Social Work, promoting social justice and human rights should be at the core of all social work practice. One way social work practitioners and social work students can promote social justice and human rights is to communicate with media and bring the unique social work perspective and the unique experience and knowledge they gained in the social work practice or during social work degree to the media and to the general public. I noticed that as a social work student, I'm spending time learning skills that could be useful when communicating with media. One of them is, for example, writing in a manner that's concise and clear. And second of them is to present ideas in a way that they are understandable, not just to a social work audience, but to other professionals and in the case of media to the general public. So I think it would be great if social work students and practitioners in general build on these skills that they already have and gain more confidence in this area. So then they can communicate with media and create their own media content and in this way bring social work and social work views closer to the general public, which I believe would in turn make social work closer to the general public more understandable and would bring benefit to the social work image. Social work has been a key profession over the years. Our role in international social work is key in the advancement of a deeper understanding of um, people's cultures, people's religions and people from the BAME communities as it enables us to provide a better service. The networks will also strengthen relationships and afford countries to benefit from countries which engage in a lot more social work research or just generally more advanced in the practice. Looking at the media, there is more negative than positive social work portrayals. And being in the profession and working and seeing the amazing work done by experienced colleagues, it would be brilliant for that um, to be acknowledged more widely. The amazing partnership with our health colleagues during the pandemic is something to shout about, be proud of, and would have been good to have been acknowledged for those efforts. It also changes people's perspectives about the profession and get more people from diverse backgrounds embarking on the social work program, getting into this lovely profession. I, for one, got to appreciate the profession even more, seeing our role and impact that we have in our society. I'm definitely looking forward to the future. Well, thanks very much to Nadia and uh, Ella for their contributions. But now straight over to the panel and just picking up on what Ruth was saying there about a movement to change a public perception and in particular, uh, perhaps some of Ella's comments there about uh, the, the, the preponderance of negative uh, perceptions. How can we set about that? And can I perhaps come to Mithran first in terms of uh, how we can set about uh, changing public perception? Yeah, easy question. Um, yeah, I was, I was just having a look back at the um, the Social Work Task Force report, which some of you might remember from 2009. I had very, very ambitious plans for sort of transforming uh, public perception, a long-term strategy for media relations, development of clear lines of responsibility for handling information when a new story on social work breaks, 
um, a continuing refreshed bank of stories and case studies to help illustrate good practice and a regular survey of public understanding of attitudes towards social work. Now, I guess one of the problems is much of that, probably all of that probably hasn't hasn't happened um, for very good reasons. I, I'm not sure how, how it could have really happened with, with the sort of infrastructure that we, we do have. Um, also, obviously, the media has moved on quite a lot since then. Um, you know, it's not just a case of, you know, get into the, the mainstream media and, and there, there's, there's your sort of conduit to the public. Obviously, there are, there are many more ways of doing that through social media, but it still, still seems that it's equally challenging for social work to, to sort of get its story out in a, in a positive um, way that has impact, as, as I think, you know, quite a few of the contributors um, through the video and otherwise showed um, in respect to COVID, obviously, we as members of the public have, have sort of recognised just how much we rely on sort of all the different sort of key workers um, in our communities, but social work has been very much conspicuous by its absence and visibility um, throughout those conversations. I guess part of that seems to be that, whereas it, I guess in other professions, um, other, other sort of public service professions, you could sort of write on the back of a postage stamp what that profession does and stands for and its function and its role in society and social work is sort of a bit hamstrung by its by its complexity and its multifacetedness um, and the fact that it's very hard to sort of think of a of a simple definition of social work um, I guess also social work in many ways operates at the margins um, with marginalized people who you know don't perhaps sometimes have the public affection the public value that um that they deserve and have the right to and that reflects on on social work so it's 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 a, it's a real challenge in many many ways I, I don't know how far people think social media might provide opportunities it's very very difficult with the constraints under which social workers work to be able to get stories out through that through that route. I mean, there, there is a sort of, you know, there's there's some great sort of social workers who are, who are very good on social media, but it's very difficult to go beyond talking to the professional community and beyond to the public. Um, you know, perhaps initiatives like social workers being sort of, as it's being piloted in many areas, sort of um, placed in schools within universal services. So there's just that greater level of contact with the public. So it's it's not just about working in sort of very sort of specialist circumstances, but working in in sort of universal services that that might have a difference. Um, it was great to see so many celebrities on the video, you know, including First Minister of Wales, former social worker. So, you know, perhaps ways of sort of tapping into into those people who who, who have who have a public profile. Um, and obviously, Baswell does have a have a have a sort of critical role to play um i mean i guess membership sort of levels they probably are critical to that um but yes i don't think i've got any answers i think uh, it's just it's a lot of questions really but um yeah I'd be interested to hear what i would say yeah that's been really helpful thank you for that mithran and let's come to ali now to, to say a little bit more from your perspective ali about public perceptions and how we might shift them in a more positive direction yeah, certainly. I've I've kind of been thinking from a service user perspective, um, you know, about these perceptions or, or that the public have, and I think coming from a service user perspective, I think a lot of it is fear, um, and that that the stigma that also goes along with it, because a lot of people are frightened to admit that they um, have an inability to cope, as it were. Um, so friends, families, neighbours, employers. Um, they, they really don't want to diverge too much. So I think we have to kind of help the public to understand that, you know, social work is coming from a supportive um, and, ad, you know, an advocate. It, you know, social workers are our, our allies. And then I started to think about well, what do the public actually know? For example, do they know when it all started? You know, I mean, I believe, you know, it's around, you know, early 19th century with volunteer in the community. And then I think, 
went into schools and hospitals but wasn't recognized professionally until about 1930 so you know are a lot of the public thinking that this is you know a relatively new thing is it a millennia thing you know you know why is there so much coverage now um and the i and, and i think the answer to that is because you know it's the zeitgeist isn't it really i think they also don't know that is social work is it a public or is it a private service you know are they going to have to pay for this is this something that um they're entitled to uh, questions that a, a lot of the public don't know and i think the fear of authority because you know some of the myths um around you know the authority and extreme lefties and things like this will encourage disengagement people will be frightened to engage because i think you know the the word social services social worker can in some people that's never experienced it at all um can put that fear as i said and they may not be aware of the social justice and the human rights work that's done you know alongside uh, everything else that they do so um i think for us then you know it's about you know are the public aware of you know the policies anti-discrimination um anti-racism um, um, because we need to just encourage more of putting that out there so that we get a diversity of um, students to come to the profession which will there therefore infiltrate all of our cultures and you know and we have to be inclusive whether it be different cultures whether it be communities of migrants spain lgbtqs we want to cry and i think display um demonstrate that we are inclusive you know social work is needed in every single in culture every single culture um so we just need to be make sure that we're making the public aware of the empowerment and the relationship the partnership building um through your life course the challenges through your life course this is what social workers are here to help us with and, and do very successfully and also i think maybe experts like experience service users um are the public aware that we are actually assisting uh, and helping and um, contributing to things like training, you know, policies? Do they know that this kind of involvement um, even exists? Um, you know, we even have input into, you know, good practice and um, that be it technical or theoretical. So I think all of those things are, I deliver really here as, as uh, from a service user perspective. So I hope that's useful. Thanks, Ali. And I think that sets a real uh, challenging agenda, really. Uh, a great many things that, that we could usefully look at and we must look at, really, in, as we're to uh, uh, progress into the future and if we're to improve public understanding and knowledge. So perhaps if I can come to Sandra on this now, and just obviously from a practicing social worker's perspective, Sandra, what's your, what's your view about uh, what you've heard and about what we can usefully do to make a positive difference? It's um it's quite interesting because I think one of the things I've noticed is that we we've not mentioned about the media and the power of the media to influence, and um I think it's really important to understand that because ultimately. Um, until we really do understand how they do influence, we're not going to be able to address some of those issues that have been raised. Um, in um, Noam Chomsky's Manufacturing Consent, he talks about um, two key points. He says the media are not always independent and does not always seek to inform the public it serves. He also says that the media sometimes defends social and economic policies because sometimes it represents the privileged groups. Now, this matters quite a lot. Because it matters because it suggests that the media may not discuss the impact of austerity or the impact of um, cuts to local authorities. So it's really important that we do express as social workers, as a service users, um, our voices. Because there's a saying, um, it's an African proverb, it's called, until the lion learns how to write every story. Um, sorry, let me repeat that again. Until the lion learns how to write, every story will glorify the hunter. And, you know, what that means is those in power will continue to lift their own voices and tell their side of the story unless we narrate our own. And it's really important that we continue to do that. And um, much like Ms. Ram was saying, um, through social media, through any opportunity, really, where we can promote our voices. So it's not just one narrative, um, but the media obviously play a role in this. We can't ignore the political context when we say, you know, when we're discussing these issues, I guess. And, and that's it.
Thanks, Sandra. Uh, that's been really helpful and, you know, again, really sets out some of the challenges that we face. Um, and I noticed that one of the, the comments coming in from uh, uh, the people who are also watching this discussion is that we need to, as social workers, identify more with the communities that we serve and with local people so that they can see what is being uh, modelled. And I think that's hugely important. It's something maybe we've lost along the way. Uh, those of us that grew up in generic social work, in my case going back 40 years or more, uh, worked in local areas where we knew uh, the local communities, we were part of the local communities, we knew the other services there, uh, and we could link in and relate to uh, the needs of that very small local community. But but times have changed and moved on, not always for the better. Uh, so the question, I guess, that uh, I'd like to move on to is how Baswa can actually help engagement with the wider public, including those who don't use social work services, to increase understanding of the profession. I'd like to come to Gabby just to uh, perhaps give your uh, take on that, Gabby. Thanks, John. Um, my background is from the heritage sector and I've worked in community engagement roles within heritage and museums for many years before I worked at Baswa. And one of the key things we actually looked at was obviously heritage for all. And I say obviously because you would think it is an obvious thing to say that museums and heritage and historic properties, archives and access is available to all, but it isn't. And also, sometimes people don't know that it's accessible to them. And I think that's one of the key things that I've worked in in the past, looking at access and looking at engagement. And I think when you're talking about creating um, more accessibility and more opportunities, you have to look at education an education, not just from the social work perspective, but also like Ali said, it's basically saying, what is social work? It's telling people outside of the profession exactly what it is, talking about the heritage, talking about when that started, how it's developed and who it's supported and continues to support. And with that, that, that comes sort of a, an element of breaking down those boundaries. And, and again, like Ali said, there's fear. People are fearful. Again, something Sandra said about the media. Sometimes the media will portray the things they want to portray as opposed to how it really possibly is. Um, so I, I would say from my perspective that one of the, the key things that I've always worked in is looking at volunteer engagement. So bringing people together in an environment that will share something, so, so something they can learn together and develop together. Um, and that can be that can be anything from, from something we've been doing in the Heritage Project, like different initiatives, um, the, the oral histories, for example, um, somebody interviewing another person, I'm talking about their experiences together, um, and looking at um, social work as a shared experience between the social worker and the person that is the expert by experience, because one cannot exist without the other. And um, I think that's really, really key. And that's something we have learned through the project and continue to learn. So what I would like to see, and I know that 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 within heritage and, and museums and um, within that sort of sector, they are working on this now. And very much like Mithran said, education and universities too. A lot of people are engaging with social workers. Social workers are working within these areas, to, in exhibitions, uh, within collections, um, for, for peripatetic um, education. And um, it's actually getting not only the word out about social work and what social work does, but also breaking down those boundaries by saying, hello, hey, I'm a human being. <laughs> I'm a person too. I'm a social worker, but I also do, I also do, do this. I'm also interested in that. And that's really, really key to, to sort of um, ex bringing that in external kind of external feeling in and, and the voice in because it it shares it engages and it shows it shows someone outside of the profession that 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 we are we're all effectively the same we are just in different roles and um it's about sort of learning and being open 
open to learning and and we all have prejudices and it's about looking at our own prejudices um and 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 sort of being very aware of those and breaking those down but but like mithran said i i don't have all the answers but i do think um looking at those areas um like he said that are that are sort of areas we, we can get into um that we have friends in like the media like education um like the arts um, it's very key um, to engaging on a different level. Um, art is a great medium um, and uh, and can come in many different forms. And I think that's something we started on the project and I would like to see continuing with the plethora of amazing uh, members, social workers and, and, and experts by experience that we work with. That's great, thanks Gabby. And I'd like to bring in one of those experts by experience, uh, Russell, who's helped us so much during the project, just for your view on uh, the, the, the issue of public perceptions. It's been pointed out by some of the uh, people watching that, of course, we have our own journal, Professional Social Work magazine, that, that described a, a jewel in Basra's crown uh, that does enable us to, to have our own say, if you like. But, but Russell, what's your, uh, what would you like to, to add in to the discussion we've had so far? Yeah, thanks, John. Uh, and I must endorse Ali's words earlier. Uh, her experience is obviously outstanding and we've all benefited from that as a, as a committee. And uh, thanks, Gabby. Uh, for me, it's um, we're all affected by each of the stories. Uh, we need to listen to them and learn from them. And it's about changing the conversation uh, and having supported Baswin for many years and worked alongside my social work colleagues. I see this great opportunity for Baswa to unlock the potential of community partnerships for social good. Um, I've witnessed firsthand that services that are co-produced and co-designed can achieve many things. Uh, but more importantly, they give a sense of ownership and uh, shared values. Uh, again, many times I've witnessed both nationally and internationally, the working closely with a community partner can achieve more that can be done alone for many reasons. They can tap into knowledge sets and they can generate and expand new understandings of social problems and situations. I mean, they know best what they need in their own backyard. And I think Basworth can support this without judgment or agenda. Uh, and I also think it's important to uh, engage with younger people. And we need role models to be involved in the work we're doing and to surround ourselves with creative and inspirational people, as Gabby touched on. Often, some of the organisations I'm involved in they don't have social workers or clinicians uh, solely on their advisory group. You know, we have people from creative industries and from media. I mean, good grief, even the Taliban now has got a PR section. Uh, and that power of, it was touched on earlier about uh, social media and, and the role that that can play. And I think we need to get those inspirational stories out. Uh, and certainly, I know that Ruth touched on it. For me, it's all about lifelong learning and active citizenship. And I think that we can engage with the community, give them a shared sense of ownership in, in, in what we are doing and try and highlight all those fabulous, good social work practices that we've come across over the years. I mean, I'm as old as Boswell when it comes to my experience of social work. My first social worker was 50 years ago and uh, they've supported me and my family throughout. And I've got some great stories. I mean, I've written a lot for Gabby and Ruth and uh, I'm, I mean, I'm... I'm proud to say that I've been part of this organisation and this heritage group, and I'm also delighted to have been uh, published on a number of occasions by Baswa and had some great feedback. And I think we need more stories like that. And the film we showed earlier brought that home. And uh, there's a lot of people out there with a positive experience. But sadly, you know, you don't get that on the front page of The Sun. You get the horror stories and they are very few and far between. But they, they, are, they are what the headliners, the headline writers look for. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Russell. And I think, unfortunately, time is, is against us. Uh, and I, it would be great to have uh, further input from, from everybody. But I'm afraid uh, we will need to, uh, to, to move on shortly to uh, the rest of our, the, this afternoon's activities. And I think what Russell has said actually summarises uh, where we're up to really well. Uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, what what we need to do and where we need to get there and the contributions from 
the other speakers this afternoon has really helped us uh, to uh, focus on this area of debate and how we can make a positive difference uh, to the public perception of social work and draw people in. So I'd like to uh, offer my uh, great thanks to all of you who've uh, uh, been uh, prepared to uh, uh, appear on the panel this afternoon. I'm sorry we haven't had more, a longer chance for a discussion. Perhaps we'll try and do that again in the future. Uh, and uh, many thanks to all of you that have been uh, watching this session as well. So a great thank you to the panellists and everyone who's attended and contributed to the session. In the meantime, thank you again very much to all the, uh, the, the people who've been on the panel and thank you all for listening and participating in this session. Thanks very much.